So welcome back to MKE Gadgets. Today we're over at my CAD station, and you can hear my printer over here on the side printing away. And I got this countertop recently, and this is where I do all my CAD work for my 3D printer. And I really like this setup, nice hard surface, and I have all my tools here, and my mouse, a caliper, and stuff close to at hand. So behind my laptop, you have various projects and various stages of work. And the problem is I lay them in here and then they fall off the back onto the floor. They fall off on this side. They work their way over here and then they get in front of my mouse and I can't use my mouse. Maybe I should have a mouse pad. So today we're gonna make a box that kind of covers this area with a low two inch wall so I can put different projects in there as I do the CAD work and as I wait for them to be printed out. So let's go over to the bench and we're going to talk more about this box and I'm going to show you how I'm going to make it. So back at the workbench here, I made a prototype wooden box with finger joints on there and it's kind of fun to do. This one turned out pretty good and it's just some scrap wood I had there with a piece of plywood bottom. And uh, I thought, well, why don't I use this kind of design to make my box? And I'm calling it a box because it has four sides in the bottom. I don't know what else to call it. I could call it a tray. It's also a tray, I guess. So the other day, on my way to the Super Ultra Mega Big Box store to buy wood for this project, a bunch of dresser drawers. I wasn't sure if it was real wood here. So I took my pocket knife out and I carved a hunk out. And that's real wood. And the sides and bottom are just particle board with plastic coating on there, paper, whatever. So I won't use that. So all I really want is this drawer piece here. So let's measure that. And that's about 800, uh, that's about 800,000 thick. In metric, that'd be one kilogram. All right, so I gotta take this all apart. And uh, got some nice knobs there. I mean, who doesn't like a nice knob? My whole project, I want to do for nothing. And the funny thing is, when I picked these drawers off a of curb, there was a dime in there, 10 cent piece. So I'm already 10 cents to the good. So there's two knobs on here. These are kind of nice because uh, you're going to hang them on a the wall and make a nice coat rack. You can hang your coat on there, your hat or something like that. I'm going to save those and... You know, you might see these in a future video. I got a couple of these off the curb, so I got at least six knobs. And in case I make a mistake, I have plenty of wood. So first we got to go there and remove those screws. This is, this is really nice. I might go back and get more of these off the curb. They have three threaded holes there. So you can put two fasteners in there, and that way it won't rotate. I mean, it looks good that way or that way. I see a coat rack in my future. How about some cufflinks? Wouldn't just make some awesome cufflinks? So a couple square screws here. Now this track and these screws, that goes right into my bucket. For metal recycling. Next time I go to the scrapyard, I'll take that in. So this was the screw hole for the knob, and here's two more screws on each side. Yeah, the drawer just comes apart. So I'm not sure the uh, species of wood here, but uh, this one might work out all right. So I want to machine this down to half inch thick. And in metric, I think that's two liters. And uh, then I'll cut strips out of this. And I'm gonna have some holes in there. I really don't care. This is just a utilitarian box. So let's take this over to the planer and plane this down. 
Well, here goes nothing. I'm gonna take it down about a half inch. How about that? 2,000 silver. I wanted 500 thousandths. Almost perfect. I want the width here to be six inches and it's a little bit bigger. Perfect. Let's go over to the table saw and cut some strips. All right, we're all set with table saw. This here is a little bit more than six inches wide. I'm gonna make three strips that are two inches wide. One strip will be the front, one will be the back, and the third strip will be cut in half, and that will be the two short sides. So now I have three boards. About 32 inches long, two inches wide, half inch thick. I'm gonna square up one end and cut them to length. That'll do in a chop saw. So I set up my finger box cutting jig and I did a little test. This material is the same thickness and that's real important. And they, they go together, just a little loose. Glue will take that up and the fingers stick just a little proud. So what you do is you sand that flush. So far we're doing good. So now I have my four pieces I got cut and I mark two long and two short. You always keep the mark side here away from that pin down there. All right, let's cut some chips. You always start with the long side first and you got the mark facing away from the pin. So down here in the pin, I do a cut and I move over the pin. Cut, move over the pin. Cut, move over the pin. So now I want to cut the short side. You take the long side and you flip it around 180 degrees. And then I got the short side marked here. That goes there. And now you make cuts, remove the long board and keep moving over the pin. So before we go any farther and do any more cutting, you do an air test fit. And that fits in there a little loose, plenty of room for glue, and it sticks out a little proud, plenty of room for sanding. Now you just gotta do, you just gotta copy and paste and do that for the rest of the boards. That I'll do off camera so I don't bore you. Now comes the fun part. The sides I marked, long and short, face up and go together. And if all goes good, they slip together without a whole lot of hammering. And there is always one corner that needs a little help. Just keep working each corner individually. And you need a little hammer, that's not a bad thing.
So you got a little glue sticking out, you wipe that off. And you wanna make sure all your joints are tight. You can't check square on the outside because you got the glue and you got your fingers sticking out a little bit. So I like to use a speed square, go around there. And just, you can move them a little bit. With these long, narrow sides are it bows a little bit. But you get them. Get them the best you can. You gotta keep in mind this is just a tray or a box to hold parts. So the bottom here, I just removed the bottom of the drawer and it has some staples in there. Took them out with a screwdriver and a hammer. And I'm gonna use the bottom on here. So I wanna add a little glue. I'm gonna add a little glue to this surface. So I'm taking my one, two, three block here, and I'm just lining up that corner so it doesn't overlap. I'm gonna come in here with my nail gun. And put one right in the corner. And I'm gonna rotate the whole thing around and do the same thing on this corner. And you can see here, I got a little bulb. So I just push that in there. Once I get it flush, I'll put another nail in there. So this side to pull it in a little bit. I'll make that flush. I got a little overhang here. I'll come back and trim that. So off camera, I'll just work my way around and put just a couple nails in there. Well, here we are back at the CAD station and you can hear my printer chirping away. So if I lower my screen here, you can see the tray box worked out real well. Fits there nice. I can put all my parts in here for future projects. But the only thing I really don't like it's kind of a big area, and I like to segregate the stuff by color as I do the CAD model and then get ready to print. So I wish this was smaller boxes, maybe a bunch of smaller boxes, but then I'm going to be afraid that they'd be knocked around and fall off. So well, I thought, if, how about I make some dividers that go in there? Okay, now we got these nice dividers in there, but, you know, they fall off. So then I'm like, how about I print something? I got my printer right here. So I printed these little clips. And now I have the best of both worlds. I have one big box that has dividers and the dividers can slide back and forth. So out of a narrow dresser drawer front, I just cut four of these and they'll clip in there as needed. And here's my 3D printed part. Now my boards are half inch wide and this is just a little bit bigger than a half inch. And they just slide on there real nice. Just a little bit of resistance. I just gotta print a couple more and this project will be done.
So I will put down below a link to Thingiverse so you can print your own little dividers. And this whole exercise was about a couple of things. Well, one, I needed a tray here or a box. And two, I wanted to learn how to do the finger joints, which I did here. So if you're gonna learn how to do finger joints, you have to make something. Just practicing is not a whole lot of fun. I have done a lot of that over the last several weeks. So all in all, this project turned out real well. Remember I got the wood off the curb, it was an old drawer, and I took it apart, planed it down, ripped it on the table saw, and made some finger joints. Made a very nice box. So please support my channel by subscribing. I'm trying to get up to a million views by the end of the year. And thanks, we'll see you tomorrow.